You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome Ask Drone You podcast. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. We are glad that you're with us today for episode number 868. <laughs> Pretty sure it's 868. Thanks to you guys for hanging out with us. We appreciate it very much. And uh, I like the question today. I kind of like the way the guy's thinking and look forward to maybe giving him some tips on how this might work. Or I don't know, maybe tell him it's not going to work. No, we'll I think what... actually that there is a market for this. I know someone I who's agree. doing this exact practical use. In fact, um, we've used them. Right. Well, yes, we have actually, because <laughs> oftentimes we can't scale our own operations. And just kidding, we can. It's just learning. Um, yeah, I love deep questions. If you have a question about business, drone mapping, a practical application of drones, send it on in. Go to askdroneu.com, upload it, and don't be afraid because no question is is really stupid. You can't you can't ask a stupid question because chances are, if you're thinking of that question, so is someone else. Hello, Rob, Paul, and everyone at Drone U. My name's Tyler, and I'm from London, Ontario, Canada. And I'd like to know what you think about expanding one's drone business to process mapping photos and Pix4D for other mapping companies, either locally or on a website like Fiverr. What pricing strategy and time management skills would you use? Thanks for everything. Bye. Thank you, Tyler. Appreciate it very much. Um, good question. And a lot of things come to mind, is including would you only do it for PIX4D? How big is the market? I think it's probably a pretty big market. Is Fiverr really the best place to get clients for something like that? When I think of Fiverr, I think of inexpensive work, things like that. So what comes to mind for you? I think that there is definitely 100% a market for processing imagery and not taking the photos because there's a lot of people out there uh, who, and I mean, someone just asked us yesterday to come up with a class to teach people just mapping acquisition because a lot of these companies want to do their own processing. But we also see the opposite. Um, there's a guy uh, in Hawaii who, uh, for a long time, Mark, you know who you are, uh, who was doing processing, uh, just processing, and he's very, very good at it. And he charges a decent amount of money. Um, I can't actually. It was reasonable. It's yeah, like I mean, three hundred bucks. Was it like three or four hundred bucks? I can't remember. Um, to do processing of, I think it was like a thousand images, and we had very specific, like we wanted a DTM, DSM, and this, that, and the other. But also because of Mark, I learned how inaccurate the uh, GPS is on DJI Phantoms. Um, Mark, if you remember the golf course elevation being off. Um, anyway, long story short. I think there's definitely a market for processing of imagery. Now, is it something that's for Fiverr? If you were to process maybe 50 images for 60 bucks, sure. Um, is there some sort of, um, how do I say this? Is there some sort of, um, if you process, say, step one and do an ortho mosaic for people of 200 images, that would be another price point. And then 3D modeling, so you're taking you know, uh, grid missions and orbital or oblique imagery and, and merging that together, that could be, you know, another price point, let's say 250. Uh, but then the next question comes in on, do you upcharge for point cloud cleanup? Mm -hmm. do, do you upcharge for optional files? Uh, Mark was very gracious with us in that he would just give us output files because our clients were still trying to figure out how to utilize this data. And it also makes me think why Eagle View is so, is so powerful because Eagle View is a software for roofing companies and for realtors to look at a roof in real time based off of imagery that was taken from a drone pilot. So what they did is they created an interface to take the imagery and the ability to interpret that imagery and put it in a very easy format. Um, that's pretty much what you could be doing for someone else as well. But you need to think about pricing packages, upsells, upgrades, point cloud cleanup, point classification. Um, that's another thing because these things, those things can take hours and hours of time if done right. Yeah, and, y and you're going to need to invest in a pretty powerful computer, at least one, Yeah, um, depending on how busy you get. Totally because true. you probably can only process one map at a time, right? True. Um, even on a pretty powerful computer. Yes. 
Um, so, well, on a pretty powerful computer, you can process powerful. two small mapping missions, like 7,500 sure. images each, and then merge them together if you're only running step one. It also depends on how far, how many steps you've taken in the process okay. um, to really dictate computing power because step one is really fast. Step two, you know, all the power goes from the CPU to the GPU, and that's what really slows things down. Sure, sure. So you're probably looking low end, maybe three grand for a, a computer that's going to really give you what you need to do this. Yeah, I would uh, think somewhere low. in that range. So it's funny because there was a, there was, oh man, what was the website he told me? It was like Computer Parts Plus or Computer Parts Plus or it's like Computer Parts Picker or. I forget what it was called, but it was an it was a website. Um, oh man, Parts Plus. No, I can't remember who it. Who told now. you about this? This guy who builds computers in Montreal. I mean, mm. I, I really, you know, he didn't have the fun accent, so I can't like do the fake fun accent. Maybe I should anyway. <laughs> you but. still could pretend he did. Oh, you need a computer with a lot of power. <laughs> Let me help you. You go to Computer Parts Plus and you order the computers and it tells you if one part works with another part and if those parts work together, you have something very powerful. <laughs> I miss that. I love Montreal. I'm like, I'm going to go back for fun. Like, that was a blast. When I first got there, I had this like, whoa, what's going on? And then... It's like another world, huh? I've not I been. Love it. I want to go. Love yeah. it. And our money has so much value there, too. True. They're like, this guy's like, oh, Montreal has gotten so expensive. You get a hamburger and it is like $14. And I was like, $14 minus 30%. I'm like, $10 gourmet hamburger? Bring it on. <laughs> 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 yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Um, my point is there's a site that literally helps you pick computer parts and tells you if they work together. Because one of the issues is that AMD doesn't really work well with Intel stuff and vice versa. So they're trying to give you everything that you will you will know that you are able to build it from that website and that web address is not correct and it's driving me crazy because um he told me the 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 computer part so i'm going to search in my notes really quick because i typically write these things down nope computer let's try parts so while you're searching would it be beneficial to do something besides just pix4d for somebody who's going to get into this business what other types of software would they need to be the most successful in processing for other people? Well, for example, I think that's a great question, Rob. Uh, for example, you know, Anga talks about all the time that mapping is an art and a science, even though the real mapping is really just a science. But the art aspect is creating these beautiful models, right? Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, photo scan and capture reality actually do a better job of creating a point cloud and a 3D object file. Um, that looks beautiful. So if you're if someone is looking to create a 3D model out of something that is you know beautiful and they want to be able to market it or they're doing an interactive map, for example, like we finally finally captured all the data for an interactive map yesterday um, using lidar, photogrammetry, everything uh, for one particular house. Uh, thank you, Mr. Travis. That being said, Photoscan is a great opportunity. I think everyone who really wants to dive deep into mapping, you need to try the different freaking softwares. Mm -hmm. And I now, after being like now certified with Pix4D or whatever they call it, um, it just made me think like, man, I have been to so many photogrammetry classes so that I can teach it well. And every time I go, I learn something new. And a year and a half later, I finally feel like I could actually have a conversation with Mark Blacklin about processing and talk about linear rolling shutter, editing camera parameters, editing uh, processing areas, editing points, editing and re-optimizing manual tie points and why they're so important and the little tips and tricks to blow photos up to do your manual tie points. Like, there's just a lot. Which is a really great point for Tyler who's thinking about this because you want to educate yourself beyond that education of someone who you're working for, yes. right? Because at that point, you've really opened up opportunity for yourself to upsell and to say, you know what, you could also do this given the application that you're reaching for. True. And then that's an upsell for you. So you ask about pricing and it, there's just so many things to go into with pricing. Paul gave you a couple of examples, but there's so many different ways to look at that and approach that based on what your client needs and what you can offer them and how you can upsell them. Tons of opportunity there. You're just really going to need to educate yourself on what the the 
in-depth processing looks like. Agreed. And and to continue what I was saying, I think it would be really good to learn Pix4D very deeply and then try PhotoScan and then try Capture Reality, which by the way, we have a class coming up on doing interior and exterior mapping as one using just photogrammetry. Uh, they will be done filming that class next Friday. Very excited about that. Um, and they're using Capture Reality for that class. But you guys should be testing out Info, Bentley, PhotoScan, Capture Reality, Pix4D. And I'm really trying to figure out who Drone Deploy is now using for their mapping engine. I'm try- I'm like, Because they're not using Pix4D. They're not using Pix4D. Mm-hmm. And I know that based off of some things I don't want to say on the show. Because if I say them, then people will figure out how I'm figuring out <laughs> <laughs> what Drone Deploy is doing. And I have to say, there's still one thing that Drone Deploy does much better than everyone else. Outputting volumetric reports. It's all right. If you're in construction or a quarry, there's no reason to use anything but drone deploy. If you're doing construction of more than a two-story building, you need PIX4D. Why? Manual tie points. Why? Back-end adjustment of parameters to get the best maps possible. It's really difficult Mm. to explain all the variables and mapping and then say, oh, yeah, and just go use this automated solution that's an app because there's too many variables for that to work consistently. There's just way too many. Yeah. So, um, but then again, when it comes to calculating volumetric outputs, you can use Pix4D, but you literally have to pull a Rob and pull Pix4D in one corner of your screen, have four other screens, and then have Pix4D <laughs> in one other screen and an Excel sheet in another screen, and then measure a volume and say area one, take a picture of it, put it in Excel, and then have the area in the Excel sheet, and then fill an Excel sheet and send it to your client. That's a lot of work, huh? Really? And Drone Deploy just does all that for you. Drone Deploy is like, report. And it's like, beautiful report. Do a nice PDF. Like, That's it shows sweet. well to the client. Like, it's actually good. If Pix4D were to add anything, I would say, you know, come up with some sort of uh, templatable output. I know they mm. do the 3D PDF and you can add your logo to it and make it look really neat. But a lot of my clients' computers aren't running fast enough to pull up the 3D PDF. I mean, typically they wait 15, 20 seconds for it to pull up. And if it hasn't pulled up by then, they're like, why'd you send me a blank PDF? And it's like, no, 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 just be patient. Yeah. Let it load. It's a 3D PDF. Right. Which, yeah, they so, probably don't need anyways. But Whoa. Well, on that bombshell, I think that answers the question that there is a market. You need to figure out your pricing. Um, education is important. You can start with DroneU if you'd like. Uh, I think it'd be a good, good step. But I also think that you need to be diligent and research things and go beyond that. Um, this was actually one of my issues with one of our instructors is that it's just very difficult to motivate someone. If you want to be at the top of the industry, you've got to learn and be willing to learn these different mapping solutions, these different apps. You've got to be able to have an open mind and also go deep and see if these things do what they say that they do. Yeah. And if he does that, he's going to be in great shape. And I think he could build a very, very simple niche business. I think you'd be more successful in Upwork than in Fiverr based off of the audience of the clients. You're going to find more professional people on Upwork than you are on Fiverr. Just my two cents. Interesting. Yeah, and, and probably some networking through maybe even Facebook groups or something. Facebook I don't groups know that, and LinkedIn. And Yeah, LinkedIn, is that's actually a great point. I don't know that people would be looking for this in Upwork. I don't know that these kinds of folks know that much about Upwork, but I could be wrong. Um, anyways, hope that helps. If you've got follow-up questions, we'd love to hear them. Feel free to, to send those in as well. Definitely, guys. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.